This principally illustrates the isochron plot of short-lived decay systems. Now, short-lived decay systems have half-lives smaller than something like 100 millions of years. This here is the 182 hafnium decaying to 182 tungsten system with a half-life of 8.9 millions of years. So clearly, short-lived decay system. Another example is 26 aluminum with a half-life of only 700,000 of years, a system that is also very commonly and widely used. Now, how are these isochron plots of short-lived decay systems structured? First, I need to repeat what um, decay system this is. This is the 182 hafnium decaying to 182 tungsten system. And it's important to repeat this because um, the 182 hafnium is not represented on this plot at all. And the reason for this is that the 182 hafnium, because it is a short-lived system, is now extinct. So there's no more 182 hafnium. And if there's no more 182 hafnium, we cannot measure it, and we cannot measure it, we cannot plot it here. But still, for such an isochron plot, we need the parent um, somehow represented. But we cannot use the 182 parent nuclide, but we still want to have the, the elements, or hafnium. So we choose another isotope of hafnium, a stable isotope, which in this case is the 180 hafnium, and this is then plotted here on the x-axis. On the y-axis, the daughter is plotted. So this is 182 tungsten. Now, because isotopes are always reported as ratios, we need a normalizing isotope, which in this case is the 184 tungsten here. So to make a, a to, to an, obtain an isotron, we need to look at a rock at a rock that has various components, and these various components must have various hafnium compositions or hafnium tungsten ratios. So in for this system, this is can be straightforward because hafnium is lithophile, so will be in silicates, and tungsten is siderophile, so will be in metal phases. So you can use for the high hafnium tungsten some some silicates and for the um, low hafnium tungsten, some metal-rich component, for example. But for the principle, it doesn't matter. We just need components of various compositions here. So at the beginning, so the beginning is down here. So at the beginning, these components had various hafnium tungsten ratios. And at the beginning, there was 182 hafnium. And this 182 hafnium was then decaying to 182 tungsten, which means 182 tungsten starts to form, and the composition of this component moves upwards. But it does not move to the left, so into this direction, because although there was 182 tungsten, we're not looking at 182 tungsten here. So this, there's nothing moving to the left. This is something that's happening in isochron plots of long-lived systems, um, but not here. And this is the, the big difference between these two isochron plots. So it just moves upwards here. So the same for the second component. So it also moves upwards when the 182 is decaying, that we no longer see in this plot, and so on. So after a certain time, um, the first component moves up to this first blue point here, the second component moves up to this, to this other blue point here, and so on. So in the same amount of time, of course, components with smaller initial amounts of hafnium will move up uh, to a lesser extent than components with a lot of hafnium that's initially there. So after a time, these points all plot on one line, and this line represents the composition after the same time, and therefore it's an isochron. So it's the, um, it's the line that, that represents the composition after uh, exactly the same time. Now, we can then measure a second rock and make a second such an isochron. So maybe for the second rock, um, the initial composition uh, was, say, the same, but, um, but, but the time was different, so it moved up just uh, up to here, something like this. So we get an, a second isochron that looks like this here. And when we have these two isochrons here, then we can use the slopes of these isochrons to 
calculate a time difference between these two isochrons. And, and this is the age we get from the short-lived decay systems. We can calculate age differences. We cannot calculate absolute ages, only age differences. And this is why it's also called, called relative, because we can calculate this age relative to well, this isochron, not to this age, because we don't have an age here. Um, but we can calculate the age difference. And this is what we do with these um, short-lived isochron plots. And this is how these short-lived isochron plots work. So the important bit is here that on the x-axis, there are two stable isotopes. And therefore, um, the change in composition is vertical upwards here. And no other component on, in the x-direction. And from this, then we get a relative age, so the age difference. So we always need to measure two rocks. We cannot measure just, just one rock. We cannot get uh, the age just from one rock. We always need two. And this is how isochron plots of short-lived decay systems work.